Everybody here? Okay. Oh my, sorry, I can't hear you. I said, so you are not. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I am. So we'll be on the same page. <laughs> okay. Okay. So just wait for a few more people to join in. Okay. Thank you for agreeing to use your video. <laughs> yeah, don't that force me. On. No, not really. <laughs> Okay, so we can give them more time, so like three to five minutes. Okay. So that's introductions. Thank you. Okay, I can see uh, Toby and Kumi already. Hello, Toby. Hello, Kumi. I think we can unmute ourselves to just say hello in the meantime. Hi, Kumi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hi, Toby. Oh, come here. Your face. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Okay, so I'm alone where I am, so I don't have to use a mask. I mean, I don't know. I guess we're probably with people, so I don't have that privilege. Okay, all right, then. that's fine. Okay, so I guess we'll just start the introductions now. And then as more people join in, we'll continue with that. Can we all hear me? Toby and Binda, welcome. Okay, so let me start. So thank you very much for joining us on today's session. This is Doctors Without Steps. And my name is Dr. Jessica Lumi. I'm currently a medical officer at a private facility on the island. So I have a huge interest in the healthcare business and administration. So I think even this topic is one I find very interesting. Today's topic, and I'm sure I'll be learning a lot from our guest speaker here today. So I will go on to, I can see Benga, Toby and Kumi. So I'd ask that we please introduce ourselves briefly and just like say why we are here or what would we would like to learn here. Yeah. So, Kumi, you can go first. Uh, okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. So can someone go in? Okay, I'll not talk. okay. Talk. All right then. Okay. Toby, can we have you? Oh, it seems yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm Toby, one of um I'm a resident in medicine. Um, always had interest in um, finance and medicine, but also just finance in general. So um, okay. decided to tune in today. Amazing. Welcome. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. So if you all don't mind, we're giving introductions of ourselves. Maybe we'll just show our faces in the meantime. We can go up after introducing ourselves if we don't mind. <laughs> okay. So can we have... Uh, Kumi, are you ready? Yes, I am sorry about Okay, please go ahead. All right, that's fine. Um, I am for Kumi. I am currently um, completing my studies in Lagos. I'm a medical doctor as well. 
I currently work as the fiscal support of the Ministry of Health in Lagos State. Um, yes, um, started with the Doctors Without Sex platform, especially because I realized that in starting out, I'm trying to explore other aspects of medicine or even like just things outside of the physical, clinical, residential, and I was told I wasn't really finding so much. And I know there are researchers out there and there are people willing to talk to us, or they're just being some like a platform for that to happen. And so I tried to start this and it has kicked off in like November along with this economy and a couple of other things. Yeah. Today's session, um, even though it's been finance, I feel like there's still like so many things that can be learned from sure. it for someone like me. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to talk briefly about Kumi before we um, go into today's session fully. But I'm sure we heard that she mentioned she had started this out with frustration of not knowing or getting enough information on things to do outside the typical clinical consultation setting. So I think she made a bold move and it's amazing. Okay, so I will go on to Benga now. Please, can you introduce yourself? Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm being a medical student at OEU. Nice. So I am joining the program because I want to learn more about finances within the medical field and outside it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So which which year which year are you? Part four, sir. Fourth okay. year. Are you already thinking of dropping the status quo? Okay. Okay, so I can see someone else here. Dr. Philip, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kimoli. I'm a medical officer. Um, I'm not exactly interested in dropping state, but I'm interested in diversifying, not in nice thank you okay so i think that's about it for now yeah so we thankfully we all have like a brief idea of what dws is about for should I say, providing a platform where people can get information of things to do outside the clinical space like the consulting room, there are diverse opportunities, but many of us don't have access to these things. And so I think it's a great move that Kumi um, thought of initiating this and even reaching out to people to have, get information that we need so that we have access to um, more opportunities. And then I just think outside the typical box, there are lots of opportunities, but if you don't know them, then we won't be able to access them. So today we have with us Dr. Manasse. Igedebe. I hope I got this correctly, <laughs> the pronunciation. Don't worry, you got it correctly. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, so he's a renowned <clears throat> investment analyst, and today he'll be giving us uh, a lot of, he has, he has over a decade of experience in the finance sector, so he'll be giving us his career journey, and then just also exposing us to opportunities that exist even in this space. Like, you know, the typical thing would be that, okay, a medical doctor. So, what are you looking in the finance sector? Like, you should be behind, like, with your study scope and just be seeing patients. But he has broken a box, he has stepped out of the limits, and he has gone into a different sector. So, I think it would be uh, a great time listening to him now and then just having to having him share his experience with us. And I trust we'd have interesting questions to ask him at the end so we can get as much as possible from him before he leaves today. So, with this brief introduction, I'd leave the floor open to Dr. Manasse. Thank you very much again for joining us. Welcome. Right, I think we can clap with our, <laughs> with our <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so I was, I mean, I've been cracking my head over the past two weeks that, okay, should I come with some kind of notes? Should I do like a typical presentation, deliver some kind of lecture, you know, and stuff, and so on and so on. I'm like, 
let me just come and do freestyle. Whatever comes into my head, I'll just tell you guys. Yeah. So actually, this thing can go in different directions, up to 10 different potential directions that we can take it to. So, but then I would prefer it to be free flowing uh, for, for you guys to actually join, you know, the conversation and then direct the conversation where you want it to be, where you want it to go. Um, so my own is just to give you my experience, uh, how, I was, how I was able to transition, um, the challenges along the way, the motivation and all what made me to transition. So um, let me just start from the very, very, very beginning. <clears throat> So it all started before I even went to medical school. Before I started medical school, actually, it started when I was in, when I was in primary school. This journey. <laughs> so um, now, so it's uh, everything I'm going to tell you is a combination of different things, different, you know, philosophical, psychological, and and all sorts. So. Um, <clears throat> I was born with sickle cell disease, right? And uh, when I was growing up, I was hearing all sorts of stories, especially when I felt sick, you know, with crisis and all. And I would go to hospital, I'd be hearing some nurses say, ah, yeah, this child, this, this, uh, is going to die before the age of 21, this, this, that, that. And I was like, ah, what, what is all this one? Is it my fault that I was born this way? And that was like, I was like, okay, if I'm going to achieve my dreams in this life, at least I need to stay alive first. So that was what motivated me to say, okay, I'm going to study medicine. I wanted to know the reason why I was falling sick. I just wanted to get to the bottom of it. So it was just out of curiosity. Okay. And of course, when I was in um, secondary school, I already had an idea of what my strength was in GSS3. Uh, going to SS1, I was like, I made up my mind I was going to be like a computer engineer because I actually loved numbers. I was kind of good in maths, I, like I just enjoyed numbers and all. And then when I got to SS3, you know, and all that, my weakest course was actually biology. I hated biology with a passion, but I said that medicine, I'm going to do it. And that was how I got into medicine. And um, of course, when I did my work, when the results came out, the strangest thing was that the least score uh, that I had was in biology. So then we used to use A1, A2. I think biology, I got like C6 or something like that. So it was just one step to fail. So, <laughs> but then um, I passed it. And then when jump came, that was when, I don't know, everything just changed. Like, okay, I just made my mind that regardless of what happens, I'm going to be very good at this thing. Like, I just simply made up my mind that it was going to happen. So somehow I was able to, actually this very well, I actually started enjoying biology then. And then got to medical school. And of course, uh, the challenges started all over again. I just discovered that, okay, when I'm dealing with numbers, I'm actually more convenient. Like I felt, okay. But there was this thing that I was able to tap into. Um, I'm the kind of introvert, but then when I get to talk to people, I have a way of connecting with them. People just find it easy to connect with me. And I noticed that throughout medical school, and also because of my strength in numbers, I mean, when it comes to all these, uh, you know, causes of diarrhea, stuff, 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 or things like that, I actually created my own template um, of understanding. Like I would put all these causes, I mean, complications, I'll put them into templates, like create numbers around them. Mm. So <laughs> that was how I was able to use my strength of using numbers as in translating it into, me into medicine. And then um, uh, it was when I got to part five, I know part four, yes. Uh, I finished from OAU anyway, in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then so I was in part four then when I started the cyber cafe in Ife. That was when internet just came in newly into Nigeria. And OAU was one of the first, I was actually the first university in, in Nigeria to have uh, internet. And I was able to hack into the internet network and created the cyber cafe. 
So there was this small room that was supposed to be library. We now I borrowed computers from people uh, where we where people just come and browse. Then of course uh, we were now having access to you know journals and all mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Mm. So everybody thought I was going to be a computer engineer because it was like my strength. Mm. I, people, my classmates just knew that, no, forget this guy's not going to practice. <laughs> and then um, additionally, strangely enough, I now discovered that, okay, these numbers can also be applied in different ways. I'd already been investing for a long, I mean, saving for a long time. I said, I started, um, understanding the concepts of investing and making money grow, which actually piqued my interest also. Mm. And then somehow, uh, when we got to part five, uh, for some reason I felt sick, of course, wow. another crisis and all. And then I had to repeat the, the year. I did not feel any cause, but for some reason, some strange things just happened, I had to repeat the year. But because I already knew all these things, so so that the second year of my part five just didn't make sense to me. I, it was as if they were teaching me things I already knew, you know, pediatrics, thousand of these uh, pediatrics, uh, ops and gynae, uh, and gynae, yeah. you know, uh, psychiatry, dermatology, you know, stuff like that. So I was like, ah. so then it now gave me room to explore for that. I not I now started going deeply <clears throat> into finance, and the more I went into it, the more I was enjoying it. That was when <clears throat> I discovered one website then called StockMarketNigeria.com, and I joined it when I mean people would be analyzing stocks, and then I started joining. I mean, I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed the conversation. Started discussing. Unfortunately, the website does not exist anymore. It was uh, bought by Naira Land, and that was how somehow they just killed it because I felt maybe they felt it was going to be like um, they actually wanted to, to they wanted to bring it into Naira Land as the finance section of Naira Land, but somehow oh. I don't know. Uh, you know, if you if you guys have been on Naira Land, you know how that place is. It's mm -hmm. full of mad people. People that are just <laughs> and do, <laughs> so I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And a lot of people who were in stock market Nigeria are actually professionals, like people who were really, really mm -hmm. deep into finance. So they all left. But fortunately, the strange thing was, it was true there, I got to know that there was something called CFA, that's Charter Financial Analyst. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the curriculum and it was as if that curriculum was designed for me. Mm -hmm. Like I practically just fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I finished medical school, uh, of course, I had one, this one year, almost nine months prior to looking for a place for house job. Mm. Um, of course, I started reading finance, all about finance. Like I was actually going deeper and deeper and deeper into it. So by the time I started, started my house job, of course, it became very apparent that, oh boy, forget, I'm just doing this thing to complete, you know, uh, to complete the medical school and then go and find my way. And then, of course, I started preparing for the CFA examination. Um, and I started writing analysis about stock, stock market, you know, financial markets, and posting it on the internet. Then I now got to meet somebody also from that stock market in Nigeria. And I think, I mean, some of my friends were there. So she got to hear that I was a medical doctor. So she was kind of, you know, um, picked like uh, she was like curious that what exactly is going on here so we got talking and then she was like okay she sent out my cv i sent it to her and then she, she said okay she has a friend in fcmb who uh was just setting up like the asset management unit. uh the person just came from morgan stanley you know that was in 2000 yeah. 2000 2008 2009 and that um uh, that you will probably like my profile. So that was how I got to meet the person, uh, my first boss. And we, he interviewed me and that was when I was doing my youth service. And after, that was like six months before my end of youth service. They gave me, what do you call it now? Like uh, an offer that, okay, when you finish your service, just pack your things and come to Lagos. Then I was still in Ephraim. Oh. Um, during my youth service then. So 
So, but then of course, being a doctor, like it still felt difficult after spending so many years, you know, eight, nine years of your life, 10 years, everything like medical school, food service, everything. So it's been my life all along. And then I also discovered that I was also enjoying medicine anyway. And the reason I was enjoying it was because I had the way of connecting, you know, to my clients, like, I mean, to my patients then. And, <laughs> And people can say, okay, I learned that, forget you're a very good doctor, you know, this and that and that and that. And then somehow I applied to, you know, different hospitals, you know, for just for medical officer stuff, uh, because it was around that period I lost my father and I happened to be the first child and my mom just retired. So the burden was on me. My two younger sisters were just, were still in school. So of course I had to bring my head out of the cloud that, okay, responsibility was on my head. So I had to get a job even before I started residency. But I knew that if I was going to do residency, it was not going to be clinical. It was, mm. it was going to be something that had to do with numbers, maybe public health, you know, stuff, something like that. Mm. So I applied to different hospitals and all. I did not hear anything from the hospitals. I mean, why mm. FMB gave me an offer. Mm. And the offer was very good. I was looking at the salary that was going. These people actually, they actually want to pay me mm. to do something that I would have done for free, like something that I enjoyed doing already. Like they wanted to put this big amount of money. So of course, I didn't hear anything from the hospitals. And then I packed my load, went to Lagos. And that, that was how I joined the finance industry. And then um, like, was it four or five months after? That was when I now heard back from the first hospital I applied to. And the salary they were talking was like one quarter of what I was already in. I was like, mm. oh boy, sorry, you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you. It's, too, it's too late. Okay. So, I mean, that was how I got into finance. Uh, but because I actually enjoyed it, I mean, it played to my strength and all. Um, of course, somehow I grew rapidly and then uh, now I'm here. But then, uh, from my experience, what I've come to discover is that I could have gone to technology because of my love of computers. I could have continued to be a medical doctor. And then of course, this route that I took to become a finance person. And there's this thing about people think about, okay, maybe destiny or maybe there's something that you are built to do or designed to do. But if I look at all those three things, medicine, technology, finance, now I know for a fact that if I continue to be a doctor, I would have been a very good doctor. I probably won't even be in Nigeria anyway, uh, because um, I was also, apart from something that has to do with public health, I was also thinking of maybe fetal surgery. You know, wow. like there was something <laughs> that happened, there was this Nigerian doctor that did something close to it, like uh, three, four years ago, that he brought out fetus from mother's womb in the US. Mm, yeah, I mean, the surgery, so yeah. That was what I wanted to do. I mean, you know, that was the first time people like that was going to happen. So when I saw the news, I now felt that, man, Kai, this guy is living my life. <laughs> <laughs> because that was what I was planning. And then also because of my love of computers, I know that if I had gone into technology, I would have also been very good, good at it. So then I began to wonder. So I started thinking, like, really, this is, now we are getting to the philo philosophical aspect of this thing. At the end of the day, right, it's all about what you put into your career, into your profession. It's your input that will determine your output. You can choose to be ordinary and you can strive to be the best in your field. It was when I did my, uh, my jump in, in secondary school, that was when the whole thing changed for me. Um, throughout secondary school, like I was like a dollard. I was very playful then, like very, very, very playful. I just didn't like it. But then after passing that wire, and then just, you know, that biology thing that just barely scraped through, I was like, okay, let's even see what's going to happen if I put my heart into it. And I put my heart into preparing for the jump score, I mean, for the jump. And in my secondary school, I had the highest score. Everybody was shocked. Like all the teachers, like, where did this guy come from? 
because everybody just this guy just like an average person that was just you know i just got the minimum score that's what i was always getting everybody was surprised so that thing actually got to me that okay if you put your mind into something you will actually do really well and that has been my mantra even throughout medical school i was i still i was just passing not because i knew i could have done very well but for some strange reason i don't know how i did it it's not that i was so focused i did read all those big textbooks and everything I used, to, but I was very conscientious when it came to going to classes. So I always knew where the lecturers are going to set their questions from. You know, when they are talking, you know they are passionate about a particular part of mm. that, field, right? So then, of course, because like I said, I know how to connect with people. So I usually have an idea of where the questions are going to come from, and I was always ready, you know, for that particular aspect. So now. So why I'm telling you this story is um, <clears throat> the fact that you are here means that, okay, there's something tugging inside you that, okay, you can do something that is a little bit different from the typical clinical medicine. It might be related to medicine, it may not be, and may also not be related to it, but regardless of what it is, I can assure you that if you make up your mind to be not just ordinary, not just doing it because of the money, but simply because you love doing it and you want to be the best. Trust me, you can actually achieve anything. And <clears throat> when I became uh, the chief investment officer at Premium Pension in 2014, I was actually the youngest um, head of investment in the pension industry in Nigeria then. And here's a strange thing. Um, I entered medical school at the age of 17. I finished your service at the age of 31. That's 30, 31. If uh, we lost two years, <laughs> it's <laughs> lecturer strike and everything. Like, and then I also lost one year from repeating part five, you know, everything just compounded. So it took so long That's for nice. me to get to that stage. And my, Mate, who we entered the university together, my friends who studied engineering, they graduated, they were already working, then they were still in part five. <laughs> so it was a very painful thing, but I think it was one of those seeds that grew in me that said, okay, once I step out of this university, I am not going to be an ordinary person. Like, it's not just going to happen. So, and that started playing out when I got into finance. And then for some reason, like I spent three years in FCMB, then moved to premium pension um, in 2011. <clears throat> and then within three years, I was made the head of investment. Now there were some things like, then there are some funny rules, like you need to have 10 years work experience before you can head any department in your pension fund. Uh, you must be at least 40 years old. So, so many things that is stated, and I did not meet any one of them. And, but it was the regulator because they were interacting with me. Uh, the, my boss there was promoted to executive director. So the company was trying to hire, was trying to look for another person to be the head of investment. And Pencom was like, they now talked to my employer that, the, my MD then that, why are you wasting time going to look for another head of investment, when you have somebody who has a CFA charter, then they were, they were, were less than um, 20 in the whole country that had the CFA charter then. <clears throat> they were like, okay, uh, but it's not, doesn't meet all the qualifications, all the criteria and everything. Then comes said, well, we make the rule and we can break it. This guy is fit to be the head of investments. And that was how I got to be head of investment with only five years experience in finance. <clears throat> and also at the age of 35, 36, thereabout, we will live beyond the age. So I then I now look back that, okay, people who were at my age at that time had not even gotten to that level. Even though I left university very late because of yes. the strike and everything and everything. So now that now brought it home to me further again that it is all. <clears throat> what you put into your interest, that's your output is dependent on your input. 
of course, a lot of factors come into play, like luck, right? People, I mean, you can do some things that for some reason it will just be leveraged out of for no reason. But the truth of the matter is because you have already put something into it. So the more you put into it, the more luck plays into your hands. So now, <clears throat> just to summarize everything I've said now, what I'm trying to say is you can choose to be to continue in your clinical field if you want. You can choose to do something else and mix it with it. I know a couple of doctors who are now kind of doing medicine and technology together, like you know, yeah. start yeah. and stuff like that. And then, of course, I was thinking that, okay, I was going to mix finance and medicine, maybe kind of bridge the gap, but somehow, you know, life happened. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, and now I've gotten to that stage where I'm actually investing in startups in medicine and tech you know, and stuff okay. like that. Yeah, still part of the whole thing. So just to let you know that um, it's okay for you to step out of the medical field if you want to. And trust me, the fact that you are even here says a lot because at the end of the day, we know that it's only the best of the best that get into medical school. Mm -hmm. And it's only the best out of those best that got into medical school that even end up graduating in the first place. Because along the way, many people are kicked out, you know, many people fail, fail out, you know, stuff like that. So that means you actually have what it takes to do whatever you choose okay. to set your mind to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I've, uh, I've spoken a lot already. And um, I'm open to answering questions now. OK. Thank you very much, Dr. Manasi. I think I, I wrote quite a lot of things down from what you said. So a uh, few more people have joined us. Welcome. So today we have Dr. Manasi with us. Was sharing because it's a career story. And I hope you were able to get one or two things from uh, the path that you joined. So if we have questions, please we can unmute and then ask our questions or if you want to send it to me directly, you can send it in the chat box. Okay. Okay, so Toby has sent a question already. Then I have questions as well. So I think we'll just take them one after the other. Okay. Toby, do you want to read your question? Or do you want me to read it for you? Okay, yeah, so um, I, will, I will read the questions I have, uh, but if you have anything that, uh, that is not um, with me, then you can share it. All right, thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, I have a question here from Toby, your daughter. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, what skills learned in medical school has job helped you in your transition to finance? Well, there is something I used to say, um, and that is that I used to take care of people's health. Now I'm taking care of people's wealth. Yeah. So from health to wealth. To be frank, there's no skill in medical school that helped me to transition into finance apart from finance. Because it's an entirely different field. There's really nothing that connects it, <laughs> right? So it's, um, but then of course, when you, are, when you are passing through medical school, you are forced to be tenacious anyway. Mm -hmm. as in, you, so. don't, you don't have the choice, very right? part. Like you just have to put your heart, your mind, everything into it. So perhaps that is the only skill <laughs> that I can think of. And then um, something else that also came up. Right? Uh, when I was transitioning to finance, I said I did the CFA examination. Then um, when you are when you when you register for the examination, they send you these books for each level, like very big books like this. Mm -hmm. There are maybe about uh, five or six books, each about 300 pages. So that's all together around 1,500 pages. And then there were also some, um, some of these uh, um, organizations that used to slim down the, the books, like they would just summarize the content of the books. So they will change 1,500 pages to maybe around 300 pages. Like they try to summarize the main point. So all those stories, the fluff about history, you know, stuff and stuff like they, they take everything out and then they just put the, what do you call it now, the, um, the summary and then the formula. <clears throat> I mean, if you need a formula for a particular concept, they just put the formula there so you cram the formula. 
but in the books, they explain the reason why they use the formula. So you can actually derive the formula yourself if you choose to. So there are two different ways. And then of course I preferred, because I knew I was going to a new, um, a new industry altogether. And actually wanted to get as much information as I could because I had some challenges and I knew it was going to happen. And I'll be talking, when initially at the initial stage, I'll be like, ah, you are just a doctor now, what do you know about finance? So that was something that actually got me really angry. And I went, I read, I read all those books. And when I was reading the people now came up with another excuse that, oh, you are a doctor now, so you are used to reading these books. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you put it on me. When I was in medical school, I did not read all those big texts, all those grades are not told me as I did not have time. I used to read all these um, USMLE books then because I was trying to, I was thinking of moving to the ASI. And it's one of those things I told you. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like a sum, summarization of some of these things. That's basically what I was reading. Like I just didn't have time. And I also said, I did not joke with classes. So my notes and those summaries was all I read. All those big books, I had no time for them. Like, I, I just didn't like, so I'm like, people don't know. <laughs> if you knew me in medical school, you know that I was an, I'm now an entirely different person. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I think like, so what I'm trying to say is the only skill that I can think of is just that tenacity and, and problem solving. That was what helped me transition into finance. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone that wants to go now? I can see a couple of us. Um, okay, so let me ask, because you had you mentioned this again, how you went for the CFA exam. Yes. So do you generally advise that once you're transiting into another space, that you go for a certification first, or get into maybe a space that you can practice or get an idea of the work environment in that sector before you go for certification? So for example, you went for a CFA. Some people may say, and think maybe they want to go for MBA before mm -hmm. getting here. Yeah, so what do you advise? Okay, so there's really no hard and fast rule about it. You can do any one. Uh, it's all about uh, so many things I need to put into consideration, your finances, right? your mm -hmm. ratio, your particular circumstances, you actually dictate how to go about it. But mm -hmm. it's to have a game plan and then you just, uh, you just move on with your game plan because now you don't if you are switching from medicine to another industry you know that you are taking a huge risk right mm -hmm. and you can go to that place and fail and this which is not something you want so that means you will need to actually skill yourself you need to arm yourself to be tipped right to be able to um to do really well in the new industry that you are going to mm -hmm. so meaning that you need to put your mind into it. And I can assure you that all you need is just half of the tenacity you had in medical school. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be tops in whatever industry you choose. I know a lot, of, I know a couple of doctors too who left to medicine and they are really good at what they do. Like very, very, I'm not the only, I'm not the only one. Uh, there's this um, friend of mine, although he's way, 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 way younger than I am. Um, he <clears throat> is not working in standard chartered. He's also a medical doctor that switched to finance. He also has a CFA. We, he was one of those people who were able to join that stock market in Nigeria also before it went down. So we're like kind of, we formed like this small community where mm. you know, we're always talking and sharing ideas. He was also able to transition very easily. He did the CFA also. And it was exactly the same thing that he said, like he didn't really need to put so much effort. Like mm. when he was putting the medicals to like, to put into his career. And the guy is really moving very fast in his own career also. So that tenacity, you know, it's, it's actually key. And also having a game plan is also critical. Mm -hmm. So for me, I had the game plan and that was that, okay, I was going to do the CFA. At least once I have the CFA, nobody's going to start questioning me again that I'm just a doctor, right? So this was just a personal decision. But then there are times that you didn't even need to do any of this thing, but the fact that you know these things will shut people up. Even if you don't have any kind of any kind of certification or, or whatsoever, but then that certification also actually helps. It. So it now depends on the value that that certification is going to give you. Like for example, when I said um, when I got my CFA charter in 2011, we were less than 10 in the entire country 
I had that certification at that point in time. So it was actually valuable then. At that time, really, really, really valuable. We're very few. Mm -hmm. So it was a way of shutting people up that, okay, no, it's a doctor. Nobody ever said that again <laughs> since that mm -hmm. time. Right. So, and then part of the plan I also had was able to do my MBA, okay. which I was also able to do in 2015. Awesome. Uh, so at London Junior School. So that was the game plan. And then I also planned that, okay, by um, by the age of uh, 45, I was thinking that I'll work for like 15, 14, 15 years. And then I'll start my own uh, my own company. But because of the MBA, the MBA now puts another fire in me again. And I started my own startup, uh, Cody Financials, in 2017. It was just supposed to be like a test. And for some reason, that thing started growing. <laughs> it was way faster than I expected it to be. It was just supposed to be a test. So in 2019, of course, I had to leave uh, premium pension. I just felt like, you know, it's time to leave because this yeah. thing was to take so much of my time that I couldn't really focus as much as I could uh, with my employer then. So yeah. now I'm doing my startup. So it's as if what I was supposed to do in 2025 has been brought back to 2020. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, has been, has been accelerated. So, yeah. so once you have like a plan, a roadmap, it becomes easier, so and then you don't get you don't get um, uh, you know distracted by other things again. So because the problem is a lot of people get distracted, like okay, they don't really have a plan, they don't have a game plan, and mm -hmm. then you go to the service and I see people selling all sorts of certification, and then you do to follow everybody to go and do it. But mm -hmm. once you have your plan and you face it, it actually makes life very easy for you. It can be very difficult at times when you see everybody doing. What you're not doing but at the end of the day just remember mm. that most people are average anyway and you cannot afford <laughs> you can't afford to do what everybody's doing you create your own part thank you very much Dr. Manasi. so does anyone have a question or should i keep asking Okay. I, I think my talk has answered every question you can think really? of. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Is that you trying to escape from further questions? <laughs> no, no, okay. Ask me questions. <laughs> okay. Um, well, you've answered a lot of it, but I, I still want to ask. So in the course of you, uh, like going through your finance sector, like working in those spaces, I mean, in that space rather, was there any time, aside the time that you saw the uh, surgery, like the surgery of the Fetal twins, were they twins? I don't remember now. Aside that time, but were there times that you that you thought you could actually merge your clinical practice with finance, or times that you feel that ah, should I like go back into medical practice or just like consult? Or you, it didn't come up for you at all. And if it did, how did you cope with it? And how did you also handle family and friends that or majority family members that were like ah, we sent you to school to be a doctor, now you are entering finance, so. What was what was what was your response to them generally? Because I think sometimes there's that pressure as well from people's expectations. Yeah. Okay, so I would say um, I was kind of uh, lucky. Okay. On several fronts, in that um, my so when it came to switching from finance, I'm from medicine to finance. Right? My mom was like, "Okay, if that's what you want to do, no problem." Like I practically had a blessing. So she was fine with it. And um, of course, relatives, relatives did not really have any say when it come when it came to this kind of thing. Like, of course, they could they didn't even know anyway. This was just within me and my mom and my sister. So there was really no pressure. So I didn't face any kind of pressure that okay, I will send you to school. And, uh, it did not come up. So the only pressure that could have happened was probably from my father. But unfortunately, I lost him when I was doing my youth service. No, um, when I was doing my house job, my housemanship. So that also did not happen. So I guess the, when it came to switch, I didn't have any problem with it. And then along the way, um, yes, a couple of times I was like, okay, can I just go back to medicine and go and start practicing? It never, I never really felt that pressure. It never really came. Like, okay, I need to go back now. And then, of course, one of the things that kept me going was, okay, 
even though I'm living uh, medicine, I know that okay, in the future, if I have to pick up the stethoscope, I can. It's just a matter of renewing, you know, doing the pressure courses, you know, stuff like that. Because at, at the end of the day, I have my permanent license anyway. Yeah. Uh, we deal with the what you call it now, MDCN or not. MDCN. So like, so yeah, so I'm like, okay, yeah, I have that option. That option was always there. But then because I was enjoying myself so much doing what I do, that did not even cross my mind. Mm. So it never, I never really felt that, okay, regret. It did not even come up at all. So I think that's what happens when you're actually doing something that you enjoy and you're really yeah. good at it. So it just doesn't, it just does not come up. So it never came up for me. And then, yes, um, when I started investing in startups, uh, the first startup I invested in was actually health related because of course, the, you know, the team is still there. <laughs> so, and of course, um, I don't know if you know Reliance HMO. Yes. Um, yeah, so it was, one, it was the first startup I invested in. And it was even started by one of my juniors in medical school, he finished from IFE also. So like, so just, so just natural for me to, to do the investment. And then of course I've invested a couple of um, other healthcare startups such as uh, there's this lab, laboratory diagnostics on the MDAS, I invested in that one. And then also um, there's Wella Health, I think they will want to use artificial technology you know, to determine, um, uh, to do malaria, what do you call it, uh, insurance, you know, stuff like that. So that's basically how I played it. But then the only time that I had that feeling was, well, like I explained to you, when uh, that doctor did the guitar surgery successfully, I was like, hi. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that could have been you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could have been me. True, that was true. the only time that I actually felt that, that you know, um, that thing. Apart from that, no, no regrets okay. at all. And um, if I came to this world again, I'll do this thing over again. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, do we still have no further question? Or uh, does anyone want to say anything? We can actually unmute ourselves. Let me see what okay, kind so, of okay, so let me just add one thing and uh, one more okay. thing. Okay. So, um, I've also, I've, these people have asked me this question before that do I regret going to medical school, spending so many years, you know, 10 yeah. years, when I could have maybe done that? Um, uh, I mean, just gone to, what do you call it now? Uh, just maybe do accounting and stuff like that. Oh, what does that mean? Yeah. I'm like, no, I have no regrets. Because at the end of the day, the experiences I had in medical school all fed into me becoming who I am today. Mm. You know, that tenacity, you know, having that option, knowing that, okay, I gave my all, you know, to this mm. particular field. I tested it and I moved and I went elsewhere, right? Knowing fully well that I did that actually, give, actually gives me, you know, that satisfaction. Yes, I ended up spending so many years in school because of strikes, you know, and stuff and stuff. But at the end of the day, that actually helped me to build my character. Right? I did not waste those extra years doing nothing. I was actually learning. So mm -hmm. it was like when I was when I started learning about finance, it was those those gaps that I had that filled up, you know, that space. So I don't have any regrets at all. Okay. Thank you very much. So let me see if I should just ask this last question. Uh, since we have different people in different levels here. Okay, so you had mentioned something about how you got your first job into FCMB. I was someone you met on, uh, it was in Ireland now, on the stock exchange platform. Okay, no, so, no. okay. Yeah, so I saw that as a, should I say like a referral or like what was your relationship that opened that door to you? So for the door to the relationship. Okay, okay. <laughs> does the job. Okay, so skill relationship job. Okay, because I was going to ask, because um most times and then even when you were speaking for that, you had talked about how uh most of your colleagues or classmates that you had gone to school with had already left school before you finished. So and I think for most of us now that's actually the case, like that's the same scenario. We get into school and then those are some engineering 
after four or five years, they're out and they were still in school. But how did you, uh, how would I ask? Okay. Like, how did you maintain relationship with people outside the medical field? Like, even before getting into the finance sector, how do you, how do you think you can actually handle that? So say you're in fin um, final year or you're still in school or even you're outside school, like, how do you expand your network outside your, just your classmates or your medical colleagues? For that for the level of that exposure or for the sake of that exposure okay now um firstly the fact that you are here means that you're already on the right path okay. now you are you've already connected with a group of people who have the same kind of mindset doctor without stint right so that's how to actually connect um so luckily we now live in a world where you can actually get connected to any kind of group of people who are doing the things you actually want to do. Um, for example, when I was doing my CFA exam, there's this group I joined on the internet about, uh, you know, the CFA, like a support group, you know, mm -hmm. just encouraging each other. And then when I also did the MBA, same thing also happened, right? So you can, there are so many things now available on the internet that can take advantage of. And then of course, it was just not too long ago, I would say like 2011 or so, uh, 2000, late 2000s, 2000, that's when social media started gaining traction. Now you can see that on social media, there are also many different groups. Uh, you see people forming clicks, you see people you know, doing things like that. That is actually a rich resource that you can tap into. I mean, there are some people who go there and then go, just go and do nonsense, right? That's because they, never, they don't really have a direction for their life, but you that have a direction, he are like a, a seeking misery, like a heat misery, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll be attracted to that thing that actually draws, you know, your attention, your focus, and you'll be able to find it. So that is how, I mean, the internet is now, has now made things very easy for people to be able to connect across geographies, you know, across different uh, time zones. So it's just a matter of, you know, finding that group and connecting with them. It's not like a hard and fast route, but it's just natural, like, you know, just seeking out, seeking them out. And then for me, it was, it has always been easy because um, when I, when I entered university, right, uh, I grew up in Ife, in OAU, uh, went to the secondary school, then went to OAU itself. So of course I had friends, primary school, secondary school that were grew up together. We stayed not very, not very close, but then we stayed like walking distance to each other about five, six of us. And like, we're just close friends. So they all went to engineering. I'm the only one that went into medicine. You know, assuming that I wanted to be a computer engineer would have been part of the group, as all of us would have been in engineering. But because they were my friends, I mean, there are times in, in year one, year two, year three, that I was, I was actually going for their lectures with them when I'm free, <laughs> you know? So that's actually maintained that connection, even up till today. Um, like one of them is a top guy in InterSwitch. Uh, one of them is now is the, like a big short civil engineer in Lagos. Uh, it's one of the people that built that, uh, that your toll gate, that you people nearly burned down. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, the other one is now in the US, uh, works with uh, Google now. So, <laughs> so like, so that actually, that connection that I had with them, like their friends now became my friends. Mm -hmm. So automatically, of course, I had started making friends in other departments apart from my own department. Mm -hmm. So it was more or less like a natural progression. So it's not some, it was not something that I sought, just sought out like that, it was just natural for me. And like I said, although I said I'm an introvert, but the thing is, I connect with people very easily. Like when people get to see me, when we, like we connect uh, very easily. So that also helped me a lot, helped me um, a lot along the way. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your kind answers. Like they've been very enlightening. So I'll just do a recap of some of the things that we talked about here. We're going to send the link for the replay to the participant and I'm sure if we want to, we can just like go over the video and then just watch to refresh our minds if um, we have further questions. So I think part of what you've said is you've talked about how uh, we should like, whatever we're going into, maintain that tenacity 
that's what medical school built into us. So the tenacity will still help us even going into whatever field it is. And even that, you know, having the problem solving attitude, um, attitude like, and the, should I say, can do spirits now, yes. Then putting our art into whatever we do. So just showing that we can be excellent because you've encouraged us that we're like the, should I say, part of the best or we have uh, the ability or the skills that are required to succeed at anything. And I think something that I've picked from everything that you said is whatever field we actually want to go into, like you can thrive there so far, we put our hearts into it and then we're ready to do the work regardless of what anybody's saying or Yes, so thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for the advice. Thank you for answering our questions. I hope if we ever get to call you again, or if we have needs to call you again, you would answer us gladly. So thank you. Okay, thank you to everyone that has joined in today. I do hope we got one or two things from today's session. If we have any questions or should I say contributions or just things I would like to find out more on, you can always reach out to us on either of our platforms, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, or our email. We're happy to hear from you. So on that note, we can just unmute ourselves, say thank you to Dr. Manasi, and then end this session. Thanks so much, sir. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, ladies, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been nice. <laughs> yes, uh, it has. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers.